You know, I remember a day way back when I was a young whippersnapper when you bought a game and you got all the content in it and any extra content that came afterwards was in the form of a full and proper expansion. Now, I'm not that old, I'm 22, but even so, back in the day, in the days of the PlayStation 2, when I was playing PC games as a kid, I would buy things like Battlefield 2, then get the expansions years later because I couldn't afford them, but still, I could buy the full expansions instead of these small DLC morsels and having to deal with patches every second day. And that's what we're going to be talking about today is whether or not games like, say, Star Wars Battlefront are to be commended for being updated as they go on throughout the years since they get released. And this is something that has happened with Battlefront. We also saw it with Battlefield 4 heavily. In fact, I would go as far to say that Battlefield 4, a year and a half after release, was an infinitely better game than it was on release, as they did things like balanced out the entire game, fixed a bunch of issues within the code itself, and it just made it a better and more fluid experience. You see the same thing with most games nowadays too, The Division, Overwatch, Battlefront especially, and that's going to be the main topic of today's video. And that's the question I want to ask in today's video, should DICE or other developers be applauded when they consistently patch the games, add in more DLC, more maps and everything after release for continuously supporting their product? There are a lot of cons and pros to this, and let's go through a few of them first. First of all, though, the pros to it are that if a game is released and there's a big problem with it, it used to be way back in the day that you couldn't do anything about it. Every time you would get a game that released in a very poor state, say Superman 64 or whatever, there was very little chance that that was ever going to be fixed unless they re-released the entire hard disk version of the game. There are tons of famous glitches in older games that are never going to be fixed and never could be fixed back in the day because developers didn't have access to them after they shipped, and it got to the point where where if a developer couldn't fix something before their release window, well, it was too bad, so sad. However, with the release of, you know, modern technology, modern video games, and modern internet, we've seen the ability for developers to go in and fix problems with their games after release, and that sounds like a great idea, sounds like a great thing, until you get releases like Star Wars Battlefront, and if you follow my channel at all, you know that I'm not really the biggest supporter of the business model that Star Wars Battlefront took, that's not saying anything about the general gameplay, which I think is okay, but the business model that they have gone with, with the DLC packs, releasing them over time, and honestly releasing an unfinished product in my eyes, has really soured my opinion on the idea of patching and DLC. This obviously isn't a new thing. Look at a series like Call of Duty, they've been doing this for years, where they release DLC packs, usually three or four of them per game, and they pretty much double their money if you pay for both the game and the season pass, you see the same thing with things like Battlefront, even Dishonored had a season pass, and much more. But the problem you run into is when games have to reach a certain launch window, like the case with Star Wars Battlefront, that they just ship it with incomplete stuff right bundled in with the box and say it's done, and then go in and slowly patch it over the next year. In my opinion, Star Wars Battlefront could have definitely been held on to for at least another year, so they could have put in other things like a few more maps, for example, a couple more game modes, a proper single player mode, which I'm still salty about and I'm going to keep bringing up until it's there, because it's not. And that's a big problem, because it took a year before we got any semblance of a single player mode aside from the really crappy co-op version they had. And even then, it's still a half-baked mode, because all you get is a certain amount of modes in Walker Assault. And in my opinion, that's not really acceptable at all. And it definitely showed with a game like Battlefront, as everyone I know who plays the game, played it for roughly three to five hours, and then never touched it again. In fact, the only time that I ever went back to it was when they released the offline mode, so I could just go and do what I did in the other games, which was shoot everything in the face and just have fun. So why is it that they didn't just wait another year, delay the game, and put in everything that fans wanted, and a lot of other people wanted, and things that would have objectively made it a more full experience upon release? Well, of course, the publisher gets involved, right? They say, you have to have it out in this time frame, this time period, because that's when our sales are going to be maximized, and hey, look, there's a movie coming out, too. We got to release the game when that movie's coming out, because we're going to get a lot more sales, it's a lot of extra promotion, it's synergy, 
and all that marketing bullshit. And I'm not breaking ground with any of this. This is totally known by everyone. I'm completely aware of that. But the question is, are DLC and patches inherently becoming a bad thing? I think they have in some scenarios, considering that games like Battlefront can be released and then patched later, and it can take years before they become proper fully fledged games. And at that point, with a game like Battlefront, you see this where the player base has dropped off so small that there's barely anyone playing it. You can't even play the full experience now because you can't play certain game modes. The games industry just got their grimy little hands on patching and DLC, and more often than not, it seems now, especially in the triple A market, they've turned it into this shell of its former self that they're just capitalizing on to get more products out quicker and grab your money. It's gotten to the point where whenever there's a full expansion release, I actually turn my head and say, wait, what? You guys spent actual time to make an expansion for your video game? You didn't just release it, then release a small DLC pack one pack at a time? You didn't split your game up into episodes? Yeah, I'm talking about you, Hitman. And it's kind of insane to think that something that was so common and such a big part of the industry in years past has fallen to the wayside. We can't get a full expansion without it being a huge deal anymore. Games like Fallout 4, which actually released a large enough expansion to warrant the $15 price tag, or The Witcher 3, all examples of games that actually tried to do it properly. Even those ones, though, had patches and things that weren't finished with them. And on the one hand, it's always good that you can go in and fix your game afterwards, because even if you do beta testing, even if you have everyone in the world working on it, there's going to be things that you miss that someone else is going to find that become an issue and a problem in the game. So patching, beta testing, even DLC can be okay if it adds little things that people may want for their experience or they might not. But the problem is there's that line that developers and publishers have to tread and unfortunately we see them crossing it far too often. What do you think about DLC and patches and all that good stuff? Let me know what you think in the comments. I would love to hear about it. I read and reply to as many as I possibly can. If you want to get involved in the conversation or ask me anything, I'm always available over my Discord server, so you can go join that. Link to that in the description below. I've also set up a Patreon recently, looking for some people to, you know, support me. Throw a dollar my way. I'd appreciate it so I can make more videos like this. That'd be pretty awesome. I'd really like that. And if you're watching on Vimeo and you don't want to go to Patreon, you can always tip this video too. It pretty much does the same thing anyways. I am Patty Jack, and I will see you guys next time. Have a wonderful day.